Hello everybody and welcome to part 11 where we're going to look at loading and saving your game. We're going to do this in probably one of the simplest ways possible. Not quite the simplest way, we're not going to use the built-in game save, game load uh, functions that are built into uh, GML. Uh, we're going to do it manually by creating our own file and writing information in that file because teaching you how to do that at the basic level then lets you um, it lets you go from there and learn how to do more complex things in the future and you might be able to imagine how you do more complex loading and, leave, uh, loading and leaving, saving and loading. Um, but what we're going to do is going to be very simple. We're going to save the name of the room that we're in um, at the start of every level, so a really quick auto-save system. And uh, then when we hit continue, um, we'll load up that file and it'll tell us what room we need to go to and we'll go to that room. Okay, it's going to be simple. So I've made a couple of changes to the game as is, so if I run it at the moment, you can see this is all this is all normal what we expect. But I've I've added another uh, I've changed up the second level a bit and added a third level as well. So this is our second level. Just so you can see, I, I screwed up the tiling a bit over there, but um, just so you can tell that it's very different uh, from the first level because it's going to be important for us to see that we've arrived on the level we think. And then this is the third level, which is obviously very different. Okay, um, it's not exactly great level design or anything. Um, I've just done it so that it looks different so that we can tell when we've changed levels and everything okay so we know that this is definitely level three the end level of the game nowhere else to go okay so before i do anything else for setting this up um i'm gonna go to o menu first of all in the create event because this is like the first object we have it's kind of i mean it's a good idea to have like a dedicated initialization script or initialization object but this is going to be good enough for the purposes of our game. We know that this is the first object I've guessed made. I'm going to create what's called a macro, okay? By typing hash macro at the start of here. You can see that turns all bold and yellow. And I'm going to write save file in all caps, okay? Uh, macros are kind of like... Uh, Kind of, they're not exactly, so I don't want to say they are constants, uh, but they are similar to constants in the sense that they're a good way to make variables that are one number or one thing and never ever change, okay? Um, so you can just write this word in your code from this point onwards and know that it will always mean a given thing, okay? And that given thing is going to be save.sav, okay? It's just the name, the file name that we're going to use as our save game, okay? It's just going to be a text file um, that we write the, the name of the room that we're into. Um, but by, by putting it in this macro, it means I can just write a save file anywhere in game code. It'll turn red like that because it knows it's a macro and um, it, it'll contain this information. See, I didn't put an equal sign in here either. You just put a space and you also don't end with a semicolon, okay? Um, which I know is a bit confusing, but just macro specifically work differently to the variables, okay? So you don't use an equal sign. You just write whatever you're assigning it to with a space. Um, and don't put a semicolon on the end either. It's to do with how macros work. How they actually work internally is like they copy and paste essentially this info uh, wherever you put this. So if you put a semicolon on the end, it, it like causes problems in your code because this would include the semicolon and, and, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, that's why I don't want to say they were strictly constants because they don't work exactly the same way. But it's handy because it means if I ever want to change the name of the save file or whatever, I can just do that once here and don't need to do it anywhere else, okay? It's global in scope, so even though I've done it in menu, I can access that from anywhere, okay? So now I've done that, um, I'm going to close O menu now and I'm going to open up O player. Okay, um, I've already actually created this event. I've not actually put anything in it yet, but I've created the room start event. Okay, you just go to add event, other room start. So that's an event that triggers for any instance of this object um, at the start of a room. So, okay, um, since we've got one player uh, object in every room where the player has any kind of control, right? We don't have one in menu, but that's it. Um, it makes it a pretty decent place uh, to do our auto save, right? Makes sense. Um, so how are we going to autosave? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if our save file actually already exists, like if we already have one. And if it does, we're just going to delete it because we're going to just overwrite it, essentially. And that's the simplest way to overwrite a file entirely, is just to delete it and make it again. So I'm going to, first of all, write a comment that just says, uh, overwrite old save. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is write, if file exists. Okay, you can see where this is going already. It's very simple commands. Open bracket, save file is the name of the file, the exact file name. Close bracket, and what do we want to do? If that does exist, we want to delete it. File, delete. 
Simple as that. Now you might be thinking, uh, where is this actually happening? Like, uh, where is it looking for and finding these files? So when you're just reading files, you can read them from wherever your game bundle is. So like if it's just in a folder on your desktop, you can you can do file exists and it will check for files that exist just around the executable and, and so on like that. But if you want to be able to write to files as well as read from them, the only place you can do that, and it will check it checks both places whenever you do anything that reads files, but um, will be in on Windows at least um, in a, uh, a special directory specifically for this app that gets created when you run it, which will be app data forward slash like the name of your game and so on. We'll, I'll show you the exact address uh, of where this one gets created in a little bit. Um, so that's where our save files are going to be created. And that's where it's going to check for them. So now that we've checked and overwritten a, or deleted a save, let's actually create a new save. So create new save. Uh, var file. Um, it's literally just going to be a temporary variable that we use to store the ID of a file that we've opened. Um, and that's going to be file equals uh, file underscore text underscore open underscore right okay so that's opening a file um, a text file specifically um, we're opening it for the purposes of writing to it okay and that's going to be save file okay and that's that's the file name that we needed to put in there okay and then that returns an ID so that we can reference the specific file that we have opened um, in order to do stuff with it okay which is what we're going to do now file text write real okay so we're going to take a real number so that's like a um like, like a number with decimal places think of it that way like the opposite of an integer so not a whole number necessarily um and we're going to write the, the the real number that we're going well the file that we're going to write to is file obviously and the real number that we're going to write in is room now you might be thinking well room's not a real number room is like r menu r1 r2 r3 and so on well here's a fun fact everything in game maker is basically a real number okay <laughs> these do have names associated with them and i think you can find them with like room get name or something like that in fact every resource is a way to get its name uh but they all just have index like like when you use something like room or room go to and so on and so forth they all just have indexes which are just real numbers everything is basically a real number you would think they were integers like not one two three uh and they are ordered like that like this r menu will be uh zero uh r1 will be one two will be two and and so on right um but they're actually 0.000, 1.000, 2.000, 3.000, etc. Okay, it actually, basically everything in GameMaker is actually stored as a real number and can be read as one as well. So I'm going to write that real number to the file uh, room. So if we're in room one, it'll write one. If we're in two, it'll write two and so on. It's worth noting that it only worked out that way exactly because our menu is at the first here, which would be room zero. Okay, so if we were to save our menu for some reason, that would be zero. That's one, that's two, that's three. Okay, so once we've written that, we can close the file again because we don't need it anymore. So file text close, open bracket, file is the ID that we want to close. And, and that's all there is to it. Um, so just to demonstrate that this is working, it won't seem like it's doing anything right away. But if I just start the game, hit new game, um, I'm in here now. Let's go to level two so that we should see um, room ID of two in the file. Okay, so I'm in this room now and now I'm just going to navigate because it'll have already done it at this point. I'm just going to navigate uh, to that file um, and, and show you what it contains. Okay. Okay, so here I am at uh, c forward slash users, SeanJS, app data, local, super platformer 11, that's the name of the game, right? And that's more or less where your uh, folder's going to be, okay? There's a whole bunch of, you can see a whole bunch of like projects and names and stuff like that and games and things and so on that gets their data stored in here. It's just a normal way applications generally work with Windows now. And uh, you can see in here the file save.sav that's been created for us. If I open that, uh, it's opened up my other monitor, but if I drag it over here, it's two, okay? Uh, if I now were to go, in fact, I can, yeah, if I go all the way to room three, uh, if I just jump over here, okay, and then I close this and reopen it again, we should see that it's three now, okay? Okay, simple as that. So we know that we're saving the data correctly. Um, now we just need to be able to actually load it back out. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, so open up O menu. 
Um, let's go to the step event for O menu. And you remember in here, this is where, oh, let's maximize this. This is where we control um, what happens when we commit to a menu option, okay? Remember this quite recently before. Um, so we have case two and default for new game and currently also continue because we don't have a case for continue yet. That's what we're gonna do now. And case zero for quit, okay? So let's make case one, because we know option one was uh, our middle menu item, which was continue. And by writing a case for it, um, it means we no longer run. Well, in fact, we can get rid of the default one actually at this point, just in case. But it would no longer have run it anyway because there wouldn't have been a. Uh, it wouldn't have ever needed to go to default because it would have had a specific case uh, to go to instead. So case one, uh, what we want to do is I'm going to open and close a pair of brackets. Let me bring this one down as well just to keep it consistent with how we've styled this. Um, and I'm going to write break here as well okay so because we're going to need a bit more room than just the one liners that we had for those other two cases so we just open this block and put the break at the end here as well so that completes the case statement i'm going to check to see first of all if we have a save file okay if uh in fact i'm going to write not so if file exists save file Okay, and because I put this exclamation mark, it's going to return true if it doesn't, if there is no save file. Okay, so if file doesn't exist, essentially, is what I've written there. Um, then what I want to do is essentially the exact same thing as what I just did here. So I'm going to copy this and put it in there. So if we don't have a save file, we'll treat it as if what you meant to do was select the new game, okay? Um, because there's nothing to continue from. Uh, else we can assume we do have a save file and we can load it. Okay, so var file, again, we're just gonna store the ID of the file we have open, file, text, open, read. Okay, so I'm gonna open a file for the purposes of reading it and a text file specifically. Save file is the file name of that file. It's uh, save.sav, uh, save right? Um, var target, equals file underscore text underscore read underscore real. Um, so this is gonna read a real number in from uh, from the file that we have open, okay? Um, it gets more complicated if you've got multiple thing, multiple lines of text in a text file. You have to do stuff like moving from line to line and checking that you are at the end of a line and so on and so forth. But since we just have this literal one piece of data in, uh, text file is really, really easy, and we just read it straight back out. Um, so we just read real from the very start of the file, and we know that that's going to be the number that contains the room that we want to go to, okay? Um, then file, text, close, open bracket, file, close bracket, uh, semicolon. So then that just closes the file again. So we have in target the name of the room, well, the, the index of the room that we want to go to. So then all we need to do is slide transition. It's our way of moving between rooms, right? Trans mode dot go to. Okay, so rather than just going to the next room, we go to a specific one and we add that in as our second argument, which is target. Close bracket, semicolon. Um, that, I believe, is all there is to it. Yep, close that, close that, break. Yep, we should be good. So if I run this now, we know that uh, our save file is already at three, so I've got to continue. And we can see it loads us in at room number three. Okay, so let me restart the game and do a new game now. Uh, so I'm in room one. Let's go to room two. Uh, uh, this will already have overwritten it with room one, though which is a thing you'll probably want to do something in your game that's like, hey, check for overwriting files. But as I say, we're keeping this really, really simple for now, just so that you get the idea of how it works. Um, we might come back in to do some sort of overwrite checks and stuff later on. But for now, we're just keeping it simple. So we're in room two. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's actually close the game down. That's a good uh, extra test as well. So I'm just checking that file again now, actually, as well. Uh, Save.sav here, open it up, two. Okay, so it's got number two in it. That's what we expected. Okay, one thing you might notice as well, you notice I've, I'm automatically got sav files opening with notepad or whatever, but it, because I've given it .sav, you'll probably have to specify like open with text bar because it's not the usual 
um, file extension for a text file, that would be TXT, right? I've um, just done that as a very, like, uh, very low barrier kind of way to stop people editing the save file, right? And that's another thing you all want to bear in mind. Obviously, this is the simplest way of saving data, and obviously people could just edit this data and just set it to, like, 10 or whatever and skip a bunch of levels in your game. And that'd be no good, right? There's only ever so much you can do to kind of prevent that kind of thing, but um, we... I, I have another episode on kind of encryption and other people have done tutorials on encrypting your save files and stuff like that. Um, so look around YouTube, look around Google, there's, there's plenty of stuff for working that out if that's really, really important to you as well. But keep in mind, even just with a system like this, someone has got to come all the way to app data, open your save file, try to open with and change these numbers around and so on. Which is kind of a lot of work and you know, if someone is really that desperate to cheat in your game, maybe just let them, I don't know, up to you. <laughs> um, but as I say, if that is a concern to you, there are other tutorials and things that cover that kind of thing. Okay, um, but anyway, this is the, the value that we wanted it to be at, so too. Let's run the game again now, and we should see that we come on to the level. If I go to continue with the big hill, so if I continue, yes, it's the big hill going down there. This is room number two, um, as expected. If I go to new game again, this is room one, with the flat ground. If I restart, then go to continue, it'll put us <laughs> the same place, right? Because this is just room one. Okay, so we can see it works. That is it. That is the simplest way to create a basic saving and loading system. And I'll catch you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you as always to my amazing Patreon supporters for making this work a reality. Thank you in particular to Dan Inamule, Giles Montgomery, Harold Gidry, Nathaniel Walsh, Lewis R. Pereira, Nick Slabish, Stephen Hagen, Jason McMillan, Owen Morgan, Bowser the Dog, and John Grimshaw. That list gets longer every month and it's really awesome. If you want to join these cool kids, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com forward slash seanjs. People who support me there get all sorts of cool perks that are probably were probably on your screen a second ago. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next week.